Hello, Anatomist. This is Michelle Glass, and we're taking a look here at the inner ear. So our job for this video is going to be to label those structures that are not really able to be seen on the models. So we're looking here at our snail-shaped cochlea. We have our vestibule here and then we can see our semicircular canals. Notice the outer tissue surrounding the inner ear makes up the bony labyrinth and then all of this blue is showing us the membranous labyrinth. Remember the membranous labyrinth is full of the endolymph fluid and this space between the bony and the membranous labyrinth is full of the perilymph. Okay, as we look at the cochlea structure, we can see here what we can call the vestibular um, duct. We have the cochlear duct and we have the tympanic duct. Now we can call them vestibular duct, cochlear duct, and tympanic duct, or we can use this term um, scala, which is like ladder like. So we can have this as the scala vestibuli. We can call this the scala media, and we can call this one the scala tympani, okay? All right, when we take a look at the vestibule, we see our um, membranous sacs, and we have two specific ones. So we have this um, kind of lower one here called the saccule, and we have this one here called the utricle. Now the utricle and the saccule contain what are called the maculae. So when we do an AE ending, that's plural. If we just said macula, that would be singular. And when we look in the utricle, we also see at the base of each one of our semicircular canals, we have the ampulla, which is the singular version of the word, or we can call these ampullae. So that would be the plural form of the word. So that's pretty much what we can see in this particular picture. What we're looking at here is a close up of the cochlea close-up of the cochlea. We can still see our vestibular duct and our tympanic duct. And remember, these are full of perilymph. We have here our cochlear duct. And so that's going to be full of that endolymph. Now notice that the vestibular duct, you can see this sort of blue color. It is lined with what is called the vestibular membrane. When we look inside the cochlear duct, we see a structure right here, which is called the spiral organ or you can call it the organ of corti, which is what I learned. So you may hear me refer to it in that way more often, but both names are equally um, correct. Separating the tympanic duct and the cochlear duct and also kind of the bottom part of the spiral organ, you have the basilar membrane. Now the cochlea, remember, is involved in hearing. So this is the part of the inner ear that's involved in hearing. 
specifically is the organ of corti or the spiral organ where um, that information is detected. So that's what we're looking at here, spiral organ. This is a super close up version. And again, we are detecting the sense of hearing and this um, structure. So we have what's called here the tectoral membrane. Notice we have some epithelial supporting cells and embedded in those supporting cells, we have what are called the hair cells. And these are actually the mechanoreceptor cells that are going to, as you see, detect the sound waves as a pressure wave and send that signal on to the nervous system. At the base here, we have what's called the basilar membrane. And when we talk about hearing and lecture, we'll see that the sound wave, sound wave has been converted to a pressure wave in the perilymph. This is gonna actually cause the basilar membrane to move up and down like a wave. And when that happens, those stereo cilia of the hair cells that bump against the tectoral membrane. And depending on how aggressively they bump and whether they're bent to the left or the right, that information gets sent on through the nervous system and then it's uh, interpreted as sound. This next structure for us to look at up close here is our ampulla. And the ampulla, remember, you have um, three of these in each ear. They're at the base of those semicircular canals. And AE ending is the plural form. This is how we are detecting rotation. OK, so movement of our head in space. Now notice we have, again, these epithelial supporting cells. We have again our mechanoreceptor cells called hair cells. Now notice they have these super long, they have one of these super long kinocilium and then they have again those stereocilia, um, which is what we saw when we were looking at the hair cells in the spiral organ. These hair cells are embedded and what's called the cupula. And this fluid that we're looking at here is endolymph. So as that endolymph is moving because of rotation of the head, that's gonna force movement of the cupula, which is in turn gonna cause movement, in turn gonna cause movement in the kinocilia or stereocilia. And again, based on the direction to the left or the right and how far they're bent, that information gets sent on to the nervous system. When we look at this sort of, let me change my color. When we look at this sort of raised up area here where we have our hair cells located, we can call this whole area the ampullary crest. Okay. And finishing up here, we're looking at what's called the macula. If we do an AE ending, that's plural. So we do see two of these located on um, each ear. This is where we are detecting the sens sensations of linear acceleration and gravity. Now we have again our epithelial supporting cells. We see again our receptor hair cells, which are embedded, or excuse me, synapsing onto our neurons. We have again our kinocilium and stereocilia.
notice that these kinocilia and stereocilia are embedded in again another gelatinous material. And this time we call the gelatinous material an autolithic membrane sitting on top of this autolithic membrane, excuse me, we have what we can call otoliths, or we can call these um, staticonia. And these are actually calcium carbonate crystals that are here in the macula. And so now when gravity or linear acceleration, so movement of the body forward or backward in space actually causes these crystals to move. And when the crystals move, that's going to cause the autolithic membrane to move. And when the autolithic membrane to move, move, excuse me, then you're going to have that signal sent on to the nervous system. And that is it. There are some practice videos coming up next, so make sure you're um, taking advantage of that.